Well, whether you have multiple children or grew up with siblings, you've likely heard accusations of parents treating one child differently than the other. Is there anything wrong with this? Well, here to help clear the air on what we should do and shouldn't do as we treat kids differently is our friend and parenting coach, Catherine Celery. Welcome back to Good Morning Washington and the Mother Side. It's so great to be here, and this is such a juicy topic. It really is. I only have one son, uh, but I grew up uh, with siblings, so I, I can kind of bring my own personal uh, reference. But you have several do's and don'ts to help our viewers. So let's start with treating kids differently based on personality. Great. So you can't expect every child to be the same. I mean, some of us have introverted children or extroverted ch children, and they're gonna have different hobbies and that's perfectly fine. So encourage your child to just identify what interests them and be supportive of whatever they choose, whether it's sports or ballet or drama or painting or reading quietly by themselves. It's just gonna be different based on who they are. Yeah, and I, I think that makes, that makes perfect sense. So let's now talk about implementing different value systems. Is this a do or a don't? Yeah, don't implement different value systems. So across the board, your expectations for the behavior and responsibility should be consistent among all your children. So let your kids know that everybody's expected to be kind and considerate and helpful inside and outside of the house. No exceptions. All right. Hard and fast one there. Okay. What about age? How do we take age into consideration? Because um, obviously, you know, some ages need a little bit more of that attention. Totally. And, you know, this one is so popular. I mean, I have more than one child, so I can remember how much this would come up. Yeah. <laughs> but it's normal for your younger child to complain when they see an older child, right, allowed to do something that they're not allowed to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can have the empathy, and it's so important to be empathic about why your seven-year-old is upset that the older child is doing things that they can't. So let your seven-year-old know that they can't drink coffee or go to the mall on their own. But acknowledge their frustration and let them know you understand why they're so disappointed. The acknowledgement will help them release whatever negative emotion they're experiencing. So you really need to learn to acknowledge. Yeah, I totally, and that's such a good point. I was always the oldest, so I was, I never really had to deal with that growing up in my house, but I can, I can imagine though for Lucky the other one, you. just, I know, seriously, maybe that's the way that I am. But um, anyways, uh, let's talk about uh, showing appreciation for our kids. How, how do we kind of navigate that? Yeah. So that's one of the ones that you don't want to differ in showing your appreciation. So whether you're at your daughter's, field hockey game or your son's piano recital, you're just there to be their biggest cheerleader. This is where you're just wanting to acknowledge and show how you're so proud for them of their accomplishments. And just be sure to express it. You know, I'll talk about, we don't want to praise our children because that leads to low self-esteem, but we want to remember to acknowledge, highlight, and verify. And we should be, because this is always like such a big one as far as the praise. So acknowledge what they're doing, but don't say, oh my gosh, that was such a good job. Just acknowledge you did it. You showed up, yeah, right? Congratulations. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I, this is, this is, I, I'm, I'm always taking notes with stuff from you. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about um, in families when you have um, someone maybe with special needs, like a, a child with special needs, how do you kind of keep everything, um, I guess, a little more balanced? Yeah. And that can be an issue with special needs kids. But, you know, the reality is if you have a child who has a peanut allergy, that's a special need. Mm -hmm. So if your kid has a learning condition or, you know, they learn differently, then we would also need to acknowledge that. All of these things can show up and there's, there's just so much consideration when we think about someone as, you know, if you had a broken leg, you would accommodate them. Mm -hmm. So if there is something going on, you encourage the kids to practice consideration and being supportive of each other's special needs, whatever they may be. So if somebody in the family is allergic to nuts, for example, ask the other children to be selective about the food they share at home and have alternative food options. Um, and this would apply at school as well. Yeah, I'm always learning so much from you, Catherine. CatherineCelery.com. Make sure that you uh, go to her website and also follow her on Instagram, Facebook, etc. for uh, more parenting, conscious parenting tips. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.